guys. This is AT Service Tech. And today what we're looking at is a unit low on refrigerant. All right. The, the pressure should be up at least at 60 PSIG. All right. It, it could be anywhere from 60 PSIG to 85 PSIG because this is R22. All right. Uh, this package is from 1996. So um, depending on the temperature, all right, inside the building and the outside, um, it should be probably on a day like today, it's about 73 degrees outside. It should be right around, say, 68 PSIG or 70 PSIG uh, as a, you know, just a rough guess from experience. But, uh, you know, we do check these things with superheat or subcooling, depending on if they have a, um, a thermostatic expansion valve or an orifice, if it has a piston or an orifice uh, or capillary tube, then that gets checked with superheat. And if it has a PXV, then it gets checked with uh, subcooling. But I just want to show you that we're not even within the range of normal operation, okay? So there's no sense in even checking superheat or subcooling until you get the, uh, the, the dial right here up above 32 degrees saturated temperature, which is about 60, uh, about 60 PSIG. You see that it has 24 PSIG, which correlates to a little below zero degrees, all right? This is the low side gauge. And that means that this is the representation of what's happening in the evaporator coil, all right? So in the evaporator coil right now, the saturated temperature is about zero. So you're wondering, you know, why would a system freeze up? Why would the evaporator coil freeze up if the uh, pressure was low, all right? Um, and it all has to do with, it all has to do with the saturated temperature, all right? So the saturated temperature at 24 PSIG is negative one degrees for R22. All right, so this is the pressure, the outside ring, and then you have green ring, all right? Uh, green is for the saturated temperature of R22, all right? And that means that liquid and vapor both exist at the same time in the evaporator coil. Um, if there's not a, enough refrigerant, then there might not be uh, freezing in there, okay? Depending on the actual amount of refrigerant in the system. I would assume that this system right here, just from prior experience, probably only has about a quarter of its charge left in the system. Maybe about a quarter or maybe a third or so of, of the original charge from the factory. All right, this system says it only has about 4.3 pounds of refrigerant from the factory. So it may only have about a pound left, all right? Um, it is leaking somewhere, uh, apparently, but we gotta find the leak. All right, the condenser coil doesn't look too, too hot as it is. Uh, the fins are breaking down and everything. Uh, and uh, we're going to start looking around, see if we can find some oil uh, residue anywhere. So, uh, we'll spray some micron leak detector. Um, but, you know, we there's no sense of putting any refrigerant in if there's a bad leak in this. So we, we need to do is we need to find, see if we can find the leak on this thing. All right. Um, hopefully it's a joint somewhere where we can, where we can find it's easily uh, accessible. Maybe we can uh, recover the refrigerant and raise it, but let's look around and see if we can find it. All right, so we have, this unit is a little low on refrigerant, all right? And if you can see on all the piping, it's not all soaking wet, all right? It's a little harder to make out, especially with the light here, but there is some oil stains right here, and there's oil stains from here to, say, here, okay? All right, down low, down here, there doesn't seem to be any oil. I, I touch right here, there's nothing. Okay, there's no residue. All right, and when I come up here, there's no residue. All right, but when I'm coming in here, when I'm coming in here, there's, there's oil residue right there. Okay, all right, all that, that's oil. Right, so we're going to go ahead and spray these joints down with we'll a leak detector. And what we're going to look for is a bunch of small bubbles or one large bubble. Okay. If the oil stain is in this location, it's most likely up higher. 
and presently we have about 122 PSIG, which correlates to about 71 degrees saturated. All right, and the unit is off. This is the evaporator coil. I did not see any oil stains over by the condenser quill. So, you know, you're lucky when you can actually see oil, all right? I actually prefer when the unit leaks out all of its refrigerant as far as it having a leak so I can be able to figure out where the problem is. You know, obviously I don't like that for environmental sake, um, but uh, as far as finding it goes, you can usually just uh, go ahead and pressurize it with nitrogen and, and typically find it right away. Oh, there it is. Okay, there it is right back here, okay? So, all right, that's the leak right there. If you can see it, if you can see the bubbles moving. All right, so because we saw the oil, then we knew that the leak was close, okay? You want to go above the oil stain in order to try to find where the leak is. All right, and we can see the bubbles forming right there. All right, looks like we ha might have one more leaking joint right above that, but it's not as bad as the one that we're looking at right now. All right, this is an R22 system package unit. All right, let's take a look at this other one. You can see the bubbles gathering on that, but you don't see the bubbles moving as fast. All right, you also see the insulation falling down. All right, in order to, if we were to try to fix this, which, you know, uh, we'll have to leave that up to the homeowner here, but uh, we put a piece of drive down in here a piece of s-lock and we'd have to bolt this up through the top with some bolts and nuts in order to hold this hold this up all right this unit is from 1996 so it's about 20 years old all right and uh in the salt weather down here that's that's actually lasting a pretty long time all right that's uh that that had a pretty decent lifespan for what i wanted to point out is that the you know people have asked you know, what should the pressures look like if you have a refrigerant charge that's full, you know, when the system's off? And the reality is that this pressure right now is not going to be any different than if we had a full charge on this because it's actually saying 123 PSIG and you're bringing that down to about 73 degrees saturated. All right. So if the, the majority of the coil um, is sitting in a 72 or 73 degree area, uh, then you're going to exert that pressure of 122, 123, uh, regardless of how much refrigerant you have, unless it's very, very low, right? And you only have vapor left in the system, but there's probably some liquid left at the saturated state presently still. But all right, Hank, that's it. Um, we're going to leave this up to the homeowner, see what they want to do. Um, but I just wanted to show you how to find a leak. All right, just so you know what I was spraying on the joints there, I was, I was using cow blue. From New Calgon, uh, you can also use Super Blue. A lot of times you see me with Super Blue, uh, but that's what I was squirting on there in case you were wondering. Alrighty, I just uh, called the homeowner, and uh, this unit's actually for the garage, the shop, the auto shop. Uh, so um, I'm going to get him a new price on this package unit, and we're going to go from there. It's not a, a leaking joint that I'm going to be able to fix. Um, it's right up against the tin where all the other copper lines go through on the side of the evaporator coil. All right, so that's that. And this, like I said, this unit's about 20 years old and the condenser fins are looking pretty shot as well anyway. All right, I just wanted to show you what the condenser fins look like. Uh, this is an early model, a, a lower efficiency unit. So this particular unit right here sucks the air in and then blows it out the side and the top. All right, so the actual amount of fins is very, very small. It literally only has, you know, this, this much of fins. It's really not much at all.
right? This is where it blows out over here and blows out up top here. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.